All right, I'm hoping this is the weekend I finally get this motor bolted into this car. What I've got left is to bolt the motor mounts into the cross member on the car. The other half of those motor mounts will get bolted up to the block. After that, I will be able to finally bolt the flywheel and clutch assembly to the motor here. And then I can get the bell housing on. And once I get the bell housing on, I can finally drop the motor into the car. So the Porsche 944 being kind of an oddball car, uh, there's not a lot of aftermarket parts on the shelves at parts stores. And so a lot of times you have to contact people you know for parts. Um, this time I needed a clutch alignment tool. And luckily, buddy of mine, Mike, uh, had just the tool. So he sent it to me. And the best part about getting parts from friends is when they send instructions with the parts. Thanks, Mike. All right, you can see here, we got the two motor mounts in place. There's some aluminum bushings that will slip right into those. And then over here, we have the other side of the motor mounts on both sides. We have the clutch and flywheel assembly ready to go. This thing's ready to drop in. Thanks, appreciate that. Look at these two little butt heads. Ah. Yeah. All right, so I forgot that I left the transmission in this car. And the reason that makes a big difference, even though the transmission's all the way in the back, is the transmission is connected to the motor on this car using a torque tube and a drive shaft that goes through that torque tube. You can see the drive shaft sticking out right here. That sticks out pretty far into the engine compartment. It's enough that I cannot drop the motor straight down uh, because the oil pan will hit the cross member right there. So what I need to do is either drop the transmission or drop the front cross member with the suspension. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the front cross member. I don't wanna to get to the back and undo all the shift linkage and yada yada. It's only an hour job, but dropping the front suspension is probably about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that way I'll have the clearance to drop the motor in from the top and then slide it back. All right, go ahead and lower it down. Carefully, there we go. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. There we go, there we go. Good. All right, All right. excellent. Thank you, sir.
All right, we were finally able to wrestle the torque tube together with the bell housing. Got the four bolts to connect those two together. Uh, now, with the motor being suspended purely by the cherry picker here, I need to go ahead and put the cross member back in the car, uh, reattach all the suspension, the sway bars, as well as the steering linkage and the tie rod ends. Here's to see how far close this is going to be. Go ahead and lift. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, she likes it. Uh -huh. All right. Keep going. Stop. Hold it right there, actually. Play bar. Yeah. Okay. Whew. She's on a cross member, and we can take the cherry picker out. Well, hot dog. Hot dog. There you go. The cross member is back in. The sway bar mounts have to be mounted at the same time as the cross member. The motor mounts for this J32 swap are in place, bolted to the cross member, and we are ready to pull the cherry picker out. I'm gonna undo this guy. Okay, well, mission accomplished. Uh, I set out to get this motor dropped into this car inside of a weekend, and I was able to do just that. Uh, it's a very simple process. In fact, the only difficulty I had was getting that bell housing to mate back up with the torque tube, and those were the only original 944 parts in the car. So uh, other than that, it was a piece of cake. Um, I'm really impressed with how simple the actual swap kit has been. Um, I've never done a swap before or anything like this, and it's been a piece of cake. Um, one benefit I already noticed is how much more room there is inside this engine compartment. Uh, this being the V6 is now a shorter engine as compared to its original inline four. So there's now about a foot from the front of the crank to about where the radiator mounts. So that's pretty impressive. Um, what I have left to do now is to finish bolting that suspension back up. I need to finish putting those control arms back on the cross member and the frame and getting the sway bar remounted as well. And then I'll be moving on to exhaust and plumbing and finally electrical. So looking forward to getting those things done and I'll be showing you guys all the process.